What's up YouTube? Thought I'd make a quick computer build today because as you can see I've got quite a bit of computer stuff and a little bit of audio stuff just kind of strewn about my living room and it's getting to be quite a mess so I'm going to go ahead and get to work. The subject of today's video is going to be this Corsair 200R case. If you guys have been watching my channel recently you've probably seen it featured. It previously had the old Core 2 Duo hardware in it but I think it's time to do this pretty nice case justice with some hardware more befitting of it. Alright, here's the motherboard I'll be using in this build. It's a Asus Tough Z270 Mark II. Kind of a gaming themed motherboard I would say. It has a SATA SSD already installed in the bottom slot. The top M2 slot on this board is NVMe only and it won't post or do anything if you have a SATA SSD in that slot. You can see right now it's just got the plasticky Intel stock cooler installed. The chip underneath is a Pentium G4400T, which will be coming out. I had originally purchased all these parts and put this system together because I was going to put a FreeNAS file server build together, but I ended up kind of abandoning that project, and I think I'll be just piecing it out and using the parts for other builds. I got this motherboard pretty much prepped for the new CPU installation. You can see the memory. It's 16 gigs of the Sniper X memory that's actually made to match the motherboard. It's DDR4-2400, I believe. Nothing too fast, but it'll be just fine for this build. Plus, I already had it sitting around. This board has lots of fan headers and SATA ports and really is a cool board overall. That's why I purchased it in the first place. It just looked cool to me. I believe it was an open box board when I purchased it. and price wasn't too bad. It has this mem OK feature on it. Haven't used that before but I think I'll be trying that out. I believe I forgot to mention this is the processor I'll be using. It's an i7-6700K as you can see. It's just a quad core processor, although it is hyper threaded. My i5-8600K actually outperforms it in pretty much every category and is a bit better value, but I didn't pay too much for this one on eBay. Here's the thermal paste I use. I've got the Hyper 212 cooler already installed on the new chip. And it's starting to look pretty nice. It's very heavy already, this board with the cooler attached. Alright, I've made some good progress installing everything in the case. I've got the board mounted. I think this build is going to be aesthetically very clean. There's actually not really that much going in it to generate a lot of wiring clutter. And I think so far it looks pretty cool. I still need to mount the CPU fan. And also I'm going to pop this GTX 1050 Ti super clock card in because this computer will do a little bit of gaming I think. The ultimate goal for this system is <laughs> really to be an overpriced Disney Plus box because Disney Plus is just not compatible with Linux and I really need to get it on this system. Lately I've been running a long HDMI cable from my main computer over to the TV and it's just not optimal. <clears throat> okay I should be ready to go ahead and connect the power cord and the monitor and everything and do a little power on test to see if everything works. I've got the cabling complete. Cable management was a bit of a pain on this case because it doesn't have a ton of room. It's not bad with this 200R but it could use a little more cable management space and with this Corsair power supply being non-modular it did require a bit of effort to get it to where the side panel didn't have any cables pressing out against it whenever I put the side cover on. One other little tip for anyone who's working with this case or other cases that are similar, if you're having trouble getting that CPU power cable through the top cable management grommet, if it's like this Corsair power supply, the 8-pin connector can split into two 4-pin connectors, which makes it a little bit easier to route through that narrow slot up there. 
which my camera doesn't want to focus on. One minor gripe with this Asus board, which this isn't just Asus alone. I also have a Gigabyte H370 board that's the same way, but you can see that even though this board is listed as an ATX board, it doesn't use all the standard ATX standoffs. I'm not sure why. It only needed another 3 8 of an inch of board or so. It really makes it a lot more nerve wracking installing the 24 pin power connector and getting it fully seated. Other than that, though, everything went smooth with this installation. I think everything came out reasonably clean looking. Sure, surely not going to win any awards. But I think I'm going to go ahead and apply power and see what happens. First power on appears to be a success. Alright guys, I'm running min test 86 right now. It's moving through it at a pretty brisk pace. I've been messing around with the overclock a little bit. I think for today I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up though. The Windows installation will have to come later because I don't have a license just laying around at the moment. But as always, thanks guys for watching. If you like this video, feel free to leave a comment down below and subscribe for more computer and audio related stuff here in the future.